Hi there, it's Diane from Spencer Rugg Sewing Patterns. Welcome to my channel. I'm just popping on briefly today to demonstrate how to attach, adjust and fasten a side release buckle. A side release buckle or quick release buckle is a plastic or metal strap fastener used in many projects, not just bum bags and backpacks and of course my new Amplecta bag pattern which uses this type of buckle but also pram and wheelchair bags, dog collars, belts, bracelets and closures for all sorts of attachment straps. In today's tutorial I'll show you the different sizes and types available, how to open and close them, how to adjust them and even more importantly how to thread them up with or without a slider when you want to use them in your own projects. Side release buckles work really well for bag projects where you want to be able to open and close a strap not just have it as a fixed circle. They're pretty handy things as they're easy to attach. You can open them one handed if they're attached to a strap. They're really strong and really efficient. They're normally super sturdy too and you can hear a satisfying snap to know they've fastened properly. Just be careful not to catch your skin in there when they fasten because they can chuff in her. They're super quick release and they enable you to adjust the length of a strap quickly and easily. Some buckles are adjustable on two sides like this one, i.e. they would have a middle bar and it's this middle bar that makes them adjustable and it's usually ridged and it will firmly grip your webbing, stopping any slippage. And some are adjustable just on one side, like this one, where the other side of the strap would be fixed permanently just through a single slot. You can buy them in all sorts of sizes, from tiny ones for jewellery right up to a couple of inches wide. This is a one and a half inch here, a one inch, I think that's a three quarter inch, and you can get a small range of colours too if you shop around. Some have a curved appearance and others are flat. So that's a flat one. This is a curved. So you'll, if it has a curve, the curved edge should face the top. So that's the right side of the buckle. They can be used with or without a slider. And I'll show you how to thread up both versions today. So here's one I'm going to use without a slider. So this is a one inch. It's a single adjuster. So we've got a bar on that side and not on that side. So you'd fix your strap to that side and this side will be an adjustment. So this is the type of thing you'd use in a backpack. So with your buckle the right way up, simply thread your webbing up through the inside slot and down through the outside slot over that adjuster bar. So up through the inside slot, that's the one next to the buckle. So we're leaving the buckle in one piece at the moment. So we're threading it up through the inside slot and then back down through the outside slot. And pull it through. So you can see that's pretty firm when in use. It's not gonna move because that ridged bar is holding the webbing nice and taut. If you want to adjust it, you just angle the buckle and pull it. If it was on the backpack, you'd probably lift that up to pull it. You can see. And then once it's flat again, it's nice and rigid and firm. Now, if you're using it in a backpack and you're leaving that, that loose end, you can double that over a couple of times and stitch that down. And that'll stop that pulling back through at any point by accident. So that's fine for the backpacks and things where we just have a single adjustment we want to make. But when we're using it in our bag making, we don't really want to see that flappy end. Um, it's a little bit incongruous. So that's when we'd use the slider or tri-glide. So it can be a little bit confusing threading them up. So I'm just going to demonstrate how to thread them up and how to hide the webbing end inside the folds. So I've got some one and a half inch cotton webbing here and I've got a one and a half inch adjuster buckle and slider or tri-glide. So I'm going to keep that in one piece for now. I'm not separating it. 
Now obviously just to say there's lots of different ways you can choose to thread these up. This is the method that I find works the best and tidiest for me in my own bag making and it's extra secure because you're adjusting and holding it in two different places. So take your length of webbing and cut the me measurements given in your pattern. So normally you'd have one long side and one short side for a bag or a bum bag because you want a break in the middle of it but if you're making a belt it might not have any break at all it might just be the two ends so I'm going to cut this just so I've got an 11 12 inch piece now you can neaten the raw edges of the webbing where you've cut if you wish to with a zigzag stitch or melting with a hot knife depending on the composition of your webbing that will work for polyester and nylon if it's cotton you'll probably have to stitch over the ends i just use a, a wide zigzag stitch i'll put my shorter piece to one side for now i'm going to work on the longer piece so take your slider first of all it's also known as a tri-glide and that's because it's got three bars make sure you've got it the right side up so if it's got a curve the curves towards the top or well, the centre bar, usually you've got the ridges on the top that you can see. So take one end of your webbing, thread it up through one side of the tri-glide or just a buckle and back down through the other side. So you can see it's now threaded on. So that's the top. Pull a couple of inches through and fold it back. And now I would take that to the machine and I would stitch sort of a box stitch in straight stitch or a couple of lines of zigzag just to attach that and that'll make it nice and secure. I'll just use a couple of clips today to save time just to demonstrate but obviously you would fix that first. So now take your side release buckle Keep both sides fastened together and identify which side has the two openings or the two slots and the centre bar. As we say, one or, some only have one, so I've got a double adjuster there, so it doesn't matter which side to me, um, but you may just have one. So I'm going to now thread the strap up through the inside slot of the adjustable side and back through the outside slot. So I'm going to make sure that, that strap is flat, I don't want it twisted. Make sure you've got the seamed edge on top so, so the raw edge is visible on your strap because we want that hidden inside the loop. Pull that along, so keep your strap the same way up and then I'm going to thread my adjuster buckle on at that side. So up through the inside slot. And down through the outside slot that outside slot there hopefully can you see it so I'm going to thread most of my strap through that so you can see it's pulling through so inside to outside and that's keeping my strap the same way up so I'm going to thread most of my strap through the buckle so I can pull it up nice and close to my slider or tri-glide. There we go. And then when we flip that over, see that's the back of the buckle, you can see that that raw edge will be hidden inside. So all I need to do now is thread my strap back through the adjuster buckle. where we have all our loose end make sure it's not twisted anywhere and then I'm going back through up and over the bar and you've actually got the webbing inside there already where you've attached it previously so pull that through in the free end of the strap through until it's tight on your buckle and there we are we have one side attached so you can see that's adjustable here and here
and that keeps it firmly in place and you've got no flappy end now and that's the difficult bit done now take the shorter end of your strap I'm going to complete that side now for me I want this side of the strap fixed I only want one adjustable side so I'm just going to use one side of that side release buckle adjustment bar or you may have the buckle that only has a fixed position on that side anyway so I'll just thread that up through just the outside one in this in this case so you have a choice here you can either just have a couple of inches on the underneath side and you can stitch that down like you did with the previous side with a square box stitch or with a couple of lines of zigzag or you can pull the strap through so it's double and even and stitch both sides into your project so you don't have a, a loose end at all on that side then. So that is your strap finished and ready to sew into your project. So you just sew those two loose ends now into your project and your strap is ready to use and to adjust and easy to open and close. Thanks for joining me today and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and found it helpful. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Do subscribe to my channel for lots of sewing tips and tricks and free tutorials. And you can find my patterns and bag hardware on my website at www.spencerog.com.